Yes, it's the new P-40F, latest addition to a fighting family. Uncle Sam has reason to be proud of this full-grown baby who gets her wings from the American Eagle and her heart from the British Lion. It's a winning combination that means more altitude, but without fear of overheating. For a pressure cooling system, ensures a pure flow of mixture without air dilution. The Rolls-Royce engine, roaring power plant of Spitfires and Hurricanes, differs little in outward appearance and operation from the Allison. But putting it into the P-40 was more than a matter of friendship between two nations. It means she'll spread those wings and climb. Climb up there and fight with all the strength needed to bring down Axis ships. Two important features spell altitude in the rolls. First, on the test stand, you see the supercharger with the highest altitude rating of any geared single-stage two-speed unit used in the Air Forces. A control in the cockpit allows the pilot to switch to high speed when he climbs over 13,000 feet. Here's number two. The automatic boost control, which holds the normal rated manifold pressure constant, regardless of altitude. Changing the throttle sets both the manifold pressure and the magneto advance, thus interlocking timing and throttle control. This cockpit control cuts out the automatic feature in an emergency. There she is, more than 1,500 pounds of raw, naked power, ready to zoom the P-40F to new heights. Let's go, baby. Show them what the kid can do. One gun is fighting the battle of two. Its mate is jammed, as useless to the team as a broken arm to a boxer. All because headspace is improperly adjusted. Here's the story. In this gun, headspace is adjusted by attaining the proper distance between the bolt and the barrel. Failure to adjust headspace properly will cause sluggish operation and frequent stoppage when the cartridge is fully seated in the chamber. This illustrates proper headspace adjustment. The base of the cartridge is held against the base of the bolt and the cartridge is fully seated in the chamber. If there is too much head space, that is, if the end of the barrel is screwed away from the base of the bolt, the cartridge will not be fully seated in the chamber. The explosion tries to drive the loose cartridge forward into its proper position in the chamber. And since the head of the cartridge is held firmly in the T-slot, the explosion results in a separated case. Only the rear part of the case is extracted, leaving the forward part in the chamber, jamming the gun. To adjust head space, the cover is raised. Using the extractor as a handle, try to move the bolt. If it moves independently of the barrel extension, as here, head space is too loose. Retract the bolt and hold it to the rear to get at the notches. With the point of a cartridge, tighten the barrel one notch at a time. Then let the bolt go forward smartly. If the action still closes, the barrel must be tightened at least one more notch. Because it still closes, it must be tightened at least another notch. Now the action does not fully close. The notches can be seen. Loosen the barrel one notch, and the barrel will go fully forward. From this point, proper head space is obtained by loosening the barrel two more notches. The smoothness of the action can now be tested by pulling the bolt to the rear and letting it go forward. Now both guns will fire away full bullet speed ahead. A surefire answer to a gunner's prayer. With altitude, the keynote in modern aerial warfare, higher into the clouds go our fast fighter airplanes. Ever higher, breathing through the turbo supercharger, an iron lung built into our ships with American ingenuity and know-how. Here you see a model, cut away to show its inside. Here is the regulator, set by the pilot through a cockpit control. 
The bellows in this unit compensate automatically for changes in air density during flight at different altitudes by allowing more or less exhaust gas to drive the turbine wheel or to escape through the wastegate. Mechanics must go over the supercharger carefully. After shaking the unit to make sure mounting bolts are tight and inspecting for bullet holes, the turbine wheel is spun to see if it runs freely and smoothly. Next, a careful inspection of the buckets, looking for cracks both inside and out, and for elongations beyond the rim. Trouble in this department means removing the whole unit for repair in the shop. A cracked or elongated bucket is a weak one, liable to go and jam the supercharger completely. The mechanic then inspects visually for warpage or cracking in the nozzle diaphragm by sighting between it and the turbine wheel. Also checked at this time is bucket alignment, and if warpage is apparent, the unit should be removed for repair. The feeler gauge is used to check clearance, which should be kept between 95 and 120 thousandths of an inch. Run out is spotted by placing the thumbnail against the rim of the revolving disc. If run out is found, there is most likely some distortion in the hub area. And for an inspection, the cooling cap must be removed. A check is made for cracked or loose bolts. Then a further manual check for radial and end play in the turbine wheel. Now, over to the waste gate to see if it moves freely and with enough play to allow for heat expansion during flight. Next, the mechanic checks the supercharger oil supply. It is highly important that proper grade oil be kept right up to the top of the filler pipe. Should the oil supply be found low, an inspection of the tank itself within the landing wheel well should be made. Here, the mechanic looks and feels for oil leaks and checks to see if hose connections are tight. Forward in the wheel well, he inspects the regulator, checks control linkage as well as oil and air lines from the engine. The exhaust manifold should be checked for leaks at the nozzle box inlet and in the cooling air pipe just above. When the cooling cap is replaced, care should be taken to maintain the clearance between it and the turbine wheel at the prescribed minimum of one eighth of an inch. The keynote is altitude, the watchword, care, care of the supercharger in its most minute detail. For only with such care can the turbo function properly at high altitude to make our fighters climb like homesick angels. <laughs> <laughs>